Morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Good morning, Sandra. So the, the video has started. Jane, you can go ahead. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the regular council meeting of the Township of South Algonquin on Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. And we are commencing our meeting at 9.02. Um, I would call the meeting to order at 9.02. I wish everyone a happy new year and I hope that uh, we have a good night, or 2021. And um, I, will I will not do the roll call because I have determined by uh, video that all council members are present, that being Councillor Collins, Councillor Florent, Councillor <laughs> Councillor Bongo, Councillor Shalla, and Councillor Vermeer are all present at this meeting. Are there any additions or amendments to the meeting? There is one uh, amendment to the committee staff report section. We will be adding item number five, which is the library report by the CEO, Charlene Alexander. That came in after the package was distributed. Uh, with that amendment, I would uh, ask approval of the agenda and I have that moved by Councillor Vermeer and seconded by Council Collin sorry, Councillor Collins. Uh, be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the agenda circulated for the regular Council meeting of January 13th, 2021. All in favour? And I ha I'll have to call the vote because I can't see the members. So, Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Uh, four. I, I did have a question um, about... Uh, I wonder if it's uh, if there's potential to add um, under unfinished business. Um, we we never really discussed the Cross Lake dock at all, and I was wondering. And and I don't think that we've also responded to that resident as well. So I don't know if that could be added. I think the intent there, Councillor Bongo, is that that will go to the asset management committee meeting to discuss, and then uh, um, you know a response would be indicated at that time. Okay, certainly great. Uh, but right. otherwise, yes, I, I approve the agenda, yes. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Shalla? Yes. And Councillor Vermeer? Four. All right, so it is carried. Item number four on the agenda is disclosure, disclosure of pecuniary interest. Is there any member of council wishes to disclose pecuniary interest? Hearing none. Item five, present he, uh, sorry, let me see, petition delegations or presentations. The South Algonquin Business Association has uh, made a request to discuss the ma mapping project. I see from their delegation request form that, um, first of all, I will introduce the one member that I knew know who is present and that would be Gabriella Habadarian. Uh, Gabriella um, is- Jane, if you could just yes. hold on, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna let them in from the waiting room. It'll just take me a second. Okay, fine, thank you. I think, I believe it's Eve sorry, Evelyn and uh, Gabriella. Okay, I'll, I'll confirm that, thanks. Hi, is that you, Evelyn? Yes, I'm here. Great, I'm just gonna rename your iPhone thing so it comes up as you. Okay, go ahead, Jane. All right. Um, so we are at item five on the agenda, petition, petitions, delegations, presentations. And we do have um, a presentation from the South Algonquin Business Association in regards to the mapping project. On the delegation request form, I do have Gabriella Harabetti, and I apologize, apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, the chair of the South Algonquin Business Association and the second attendee, I'm sorry, who is the second attendee from the Business Association? Evelyn. And, Evelyn last name, and the last name? Lesage. Okay, thank you. All right, um, so welcome. And uh, Gabriella, are you going to be the spokesperson for the presentation? Yes. Okay, fine. So Holly has the... Um, the mapping project feedback item up. I would just ask Carla 
Uh, we have 15 minutes for this presentation. Could you just give me the heads up when there are two minutes left for the presentation? Yes, I will. Thank you. Go ahead, Gabriella. Okay, uh, good morning. I'm Gabriela Herebidi and the Chair of SABA. We are here with Evelyn presenting a delegation regarding the mapping project. First of all, I would like to thank you for validating the mapping idea. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, since the purpose of this grant is to support the small businesses and considering that this mapping idea was brought forth from SABA as part of the grant proposal, we believe our input is essential. I understand from the communication at the economic development meeting dated May 20, 2020, Council made the decision to target day trippers with the information provided on this map. You might be surprised to know that in 2017, less than 40% of visitors to the Nipissing district, including Barry's North Bay, sorry, were day trippers. We don't have a statistics on South Algonquin specifically, by my estimation, it is far fewer than maybe five to 10%. <clears throat> Based on our experience as tourism operators, most of our clients come from a minimum of three hours away, GTA and Ottawa, whether they are domestic or international travelers, mostly travelers that are not familiar with rural areas and want to explore and visit as many places as possible in their short period of time. If they have access to a visual map with attractive pictures and where to find these attractions, tourists will consider a stay longer in our township and contribute to our economy. It's instead of just go to the park for a day and they go home and stay in South Algonquin just to sleep and have a quick lunch. If day trippers are the focus, you are building a wayfinding tool that applies to a market that doesn't currently exist and which will take us a generation and more to rebuild. So as a result, we are requesting some changes to the map. Um, if you can go to the next um, slide. Um, to remove all businesses and places tourists can't and shouldn't visit. Second, to focus on natural features and export opportunities. Third, to link to other helpful sources Four, to add a scale so people can judge distance. I'll go to the next one, please. So to remove the businesses entirely. Why? Because the map is less cluttered and go, go, won't go out of date as fast. No need for the staff to track permissions or update. Township remains neutral towards businesses and advertising. Up-to-date businesses information is easily available to tourists through Google. Saba will maintain current business lists and PDF maps. See QR codes, the slide. And you can label Winnie Madawaska as downtown. Okay, you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so the second point is remove places tourists can't visit, like the daycare, unemployment insurance, sorry, Unemployment Resource Center, Township Office, Library. Oh, the libraries are mapped twice. I don't know if you noticed, you can take a look at the map. Um, the fire and police stations, you can include an emergency number instead. And the recreation centers, unless you want the visitors there. Why? Because the tourists can use this information. Locals already know where to find these services. Information may mislead tourists into thinking services are available there. Like the fire or police. I had a reminder that emergency services are available by dialing 911. And advertising, you can put workplaces at risk, like for example, the daycare. Okay, uh, the next slide, please. Okay, um, I would remove Im images that have no informational value, like the photos of children, photos of businesses, dead ends, and private roads. Uh, why? Because these images don't tell tourists anything about what they can do while they are here. They may obscure important information or worse, they can mislead people and they may put people at risk. Okay, the next slide, please. Sorry if I'm going too fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can focus on adding markers that highlight natural features and sport information across the season, like all seasons. 
that aren't easily found on Google. And please respect the Algonquin land claim, but not advertising trails that lead to proposed Algonquin territory. Locals already know how to get there, and we don't need to send tourists there. Um, I noticed that it's hard to find some access points, like the Algonquin Provincial Park, Upper Madawaska Provincial Park, Opiongo Provincial Park, Hay Lake Parking. Sorry, we had electric vehicles charging a station, but sh that should be removed because, um, again, can be Google that. So ignore that part. Um, um, and please mark natural features like trails and sport opportunities, uh, like the waterfall, dams, beaches, skating, sledding, sunrise, sunset locations. And if you can, um, would be nice if you can uh, put some, uh, assign some fishing spots. We ask, we, we're asked all the time about some fishing spots. And uh, would be nice if you assign maybe two in Madawaska, two in Whitney, so we don't have visitors all over the place trying to go fishing and the local can have their own um, fishing spots that usually did it for years. And um, we can, um, you can add the stargazing spots, bird watching, rail trail, ATV, snowmobile trails, hiking, biking, skiing trails, snowshoeing, horseback riding, etc. <clears throat> um, I put some bolder items, and because um, this is uh, the items that the tourists keep asking us all the time, like where can go fishing, where can see the sunset, where is the beach, this constantly they keep asking, so that's why I, I bold it. Okay. okay, so you can go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> so I had some photos in here for both Madawaska and Whitney of examples of, uh, of use all season photos of actual places that people can actually visit. And please, if you can map them, so they can go to the beach, they can go to Bark Lake Beach to see the Madawaska River or the Bone Lunch or Sunset at the, at the beach in Whitney. That would be really, really nice because if people are sitting and see these beautiful images, attractive images, they can go there and uh, they may decide while they are having a quick um, dinner or whatever at the cabins or, or, the, or the whatever they are, you know, um, hotel or motel, wherever they are, they can see that and they can plan the next day. And sometimes they want to stay in the extra night just for visiting. And they, they, they already drove 300 kilometers from uh, Toronto and they want to stay here another night and they can plan and they say, I want to do something local. They keep saying that all the time, where can I go? So that is really a really nice example when they're, you know, they're sitting and planning for the next day. So that's the things you can add. You can go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> And uh, we can use QR codes to provide up to the minute information uh, the tourist needs. Uh, you can just simply point to your camera the code and to come, you can visit the website. And I put the Saba website, we can put a list of businesses, uh, like currently can be uh, continuously updated. The Explorers Age, we have a lot of information there, all trails, the, the ATV, snowmobile maps, it's Spectacle Lake um, maps, the trail maps, and you can add the township website, the township social media, the Algonquin Park website. So, you know, the same thing. When people are there, they can just put the camera and they plan things for the next day, go away, whatever. Or they need something from the township, just go to the website and it will be easier to go that route, that way. And you can, you can change this. I mean, update it. Okay, and the next point, uh, if you can add the scale, and go to the next, thank you. You can add the scale so tourists can judge the distance um, because uh, the reason is it takes about 40 minutes to drive from one end to the township to the other. Uh, if there is no scale, tourists will have no way to judge how far anything is. And that's uh, another thing people keep asking again, how far is uh, the park, how far is, and they get a little bit confused. Um, so that would be nice to add that too. Finally, I would like to ask, if possible, if uh, the council please implement a policy that builds a feedback process into future economic, economic development projects. Uh, these decisions affect businesses most at all, and we want to be involved. We really appreciate if you can do that, that would be really good. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know if you have any questions, that basically is my presentation. It's very easy, quick, and to the point. 
Thank you, Gabriella. It is an excellent presentation and very visually pleasing as well. Um, the work that you and your, your um, Evelyn and your committee have done is, is excellent. So thank you very much for that. Um, normally with delegations, we just, I give a, a council members the opportunity to just clarify anything that may have been made in the presentation. So I would put that open to council at this point. Um, is there anything that you would require further um, um, clarification or, or expansion on? Uh, I have a question. Are we allowed to ask questions? Well, we're not going to debate it, but is there anything you need clarified, Councillor Bongo? Um, uh, anything clarified? I guess um, it. Uh, uh, I think everything's pretty clear. I I was a little uh, surprised to see the suggestion behind uh, having no businesses appear on the map, but at the same time, uh, I suppose that is one way to really level the playing field and and have it very fair towards all businesses. Um, and uh, yeah, I, at the end of the day, I really hope that this map is is, is well designed and and um, a lot of thought uh, goes into it. Super. So any other. I I would just like to clarify um, that when you're, Gabriella, when you're saying no businesses, so we haven't put any businesses on the map at this point, you're suggesting that you don't want to see that you can buy groceries in Whitney and Madawaska, or that you can go to the LCBO in those two locations, or that you can buy fuel or food or accommodations anywhere. You just don't want to see anything to do with private industry on the map at all. Yes, exactly. It's just to be a map that shows um, the attractions. And so when people come here, they're going to say, where's the beach? Because, you know, when you grab your phone and you Google LCBO near me, or you can put, um, you know, um, gas station near me, it takes you very easily. And there's, there's usually people don't ask for questions like that. They say, oh, I know, I can get it. But um, they say, where's the beach? where can I go fishing, where is the, you know, things like that, they don't know. And um, so that's why it's nice to have, and <clears throat> it's nice to create a unique map. <clears throat> Something is not anywhere to be found. And uh, we don't want to bring confusion either. We don't want people all over the place and to go, you know, to, you know, private roads or whatever. So it's nice to kind of, it's a way to guide them and, show, and take them wherever we want to go and know where we don't want them to go, <laughs> basically. So uh, that's the thing. And, uh, and just, some, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, I, I cut you off. And just to clarify, we have taken all the private roads off. So okay. I don't know if it was an older version of the map that you were maybe looking for, looking okay. at, but we had made effort to take the, the anything that was considered private has been taken off. Okay, and those uh, clip arts, um, I'm not sure if you uh, want to, uh, for example, I can see that fishing part is, uh, they put some art at the bottom, like, if somebody goes and uh, see that, maybe they say, oh, maybe that's the way we can go fishing, completely out of the town. Uh, you can see it's basically in um, in uh, uh, main news, basically out of the border. Of, you know, another thing uh, it's not the presentation, it'd be nice to add is um, put Bears Bay, um, to Bears Bay, because some people, like, especially here in Marawasta, some people come from there to Ottawa and Bears Bay. Uh, you know, put all the points. Since you're putting main news and Bancroft, you can put Bears Bay and Ottawa too, so people get, you know, more idea where things are. Thank you. Are there any other comments or points of clarification? Uh, Gabriella, I have a question, and um, I'm not sure of the membership of the SABA organization and that. Um, all businesses, not just, um, you know, accommodation and resorts, but um, I, I, I just wonder who is your membership at SABA? Um, well, uh, right now we have uh, a limited number of members, but we had to work on it. We had to work on it to see if we, we were working on the website and we are going to, if we are going to exclude all the, the businesses, we are going to work on it to see how we're going to integrate them. And we have to be to the minute, you know, any, any new businesses sometimes change hands, they change names, uh, they change locations. There is a bunch of things going on, you know, constantly with businesses. So it's important to keep it up to date. Right. And I have gone to some uh, websites uh, in different areas where they have maps and, and you indicated in your presentation 
about keeping the business list um, current. And, and that's my concern. If it's only, Sa only SABA members, then uh, very important um, resources in our community, such as a pharmacy may not be there if they are not a member of SABA. So I really want to take this presentation back to the Economic Development Committee meeting that we have coming up this month, because it's our responsibility as council to represent all members of, all, of our community and all businesses. So I think what you've given it to us from SABA perspective is very good. But we have to we have to balance that with the uh, businesses and community enterprises that are not represented by Saba as well. So that would be my suggestion to council that we take this with us to economic development and look at it under those criteria at that meeting. Okay, um, we can I, I can give you an answer on that on the next uh, if we can participate on that committee that we really get and we can give you an answer. And I, I, I can be included. And uh, we will talk a bit later about the Economic Development Committee meeting, which is in um, the um, in Holly's report. And I think uh, something that I would suggest at that point is that certainly if council members had perhaps, if you were agreeable, had any questions in regard specific requests, sorry, uh, specific questions in regards to SABA, such as membership, et cetera, that we put that to you before that meeting and give you the opportunity perhaps to know what questions we have in regards to that. Okay, so we can participate in that committee and give you that information, that would be great. I will confirm that when we discuss your participation at the committee when I discuss, when we discuss that in regards to that meeting, but, uh, um, and we will get back to you on that for sure. Okay, thank any you. Other, sorry, uh, any other members have a question? You've given us a great deal of food for thought uh, through your committee, and we appreciate it very much, Gabriella. Thank you. Um, thanks. Holly, I'll leave you to do what you have to do to get us back to the meeting portion. Um, thank you, ladies. Uh, that was a great presentation, a lot of work. Um, we will be talking about it later on. And, oh, Gabriella's already left. And, Evelyn, I'm just going to... Um, send you back to the waiting room and you can log off as well. Thank you. She's gone. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I can still see Gabriella there. Good here. I've been... <laughs> I have difficulty sometimes getting out of meetings as well. So <laughs> I'm usually the last one to go. Okay, thank you, Holly. You've taken us back to our agendas. So we are now going to go into item six on our agenda, minutes of previous meetings. And I have the resolutions following below. So I will begin with the, uh, the first resolution. I have that moved by Councillor Florent and seconded by Councillor Shalla. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes of the regular Council meeting of December 2nd, 2020 as circulated. And I would call the vote on that. Uh, Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor uh, sorry, Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shalla? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. That resolution is carried. Thank you. We'll go to the next one. Um, which one is that? Waste management. Okay, sorry. Did you, uh, okay, asset management. Okay, thank you, Holly. I have that resolution moved by Councillor Harper, seconded by Councillor Bongo. Be it resolved that the corporation, sorry, be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes of the Asset Management Committee meeting of November 25th, 2020 as circulated. Calling the vote, Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shalla? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. That resolution is carried. The next resolution, um, this is the, moved by Councillor Collins, seconded by Councillor Florent. 
Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes of the Waste Management Committee meeting of November 25th, 2020 as circulated. Uh, Councillor Collins? For. Councillor Florent? For. Councillor Harper? For. Councillor Shalla? For. Councillor Vermeer? For. That's carried. <clears throat> Okay, the next resolution is, um, I haven't got someone here, moved by Councillor Collins and seconded by Count, oh, I did that, and Councillor Florent. I be resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes of the Emergency Services Committee meeting of November 25th, 2020 as circulated. Councillor Collins? For. Councillor Florent? For. Councillor Harper? For. Councillor Bongo? For. Um, Councillor Shalla? Or. And Councillor Vermeer? Or. It's carried. Thank you. We are now in item seven of the agenda. Um, are there any committee reports? I didn't see any. Um, so we would go into staff reports. And. Um, and I do have a, a report from, or sorry, from the libraries. Did you want me just to do it within my report? Uh, I did add that Holly, Holly into the, um, um, where did I add that? Oh, into the staff reports, I put it. Okay. So we can do it there, which is just where we are at this point. Um, sorry, I've just lost my notes here, which is unfortunate. Okay. All right. Okay. So the first um, staff report in, that we have in our package is from uh, the fire chief. And Holly, have you, can you pull those up for us? I'm just... Uh... Okay. Uh, so we have uh, we have uh, Chief Kruger's report here. Are there any uh, questions in regards to that report? Hearing none. All right. Uh, the second report that we have is um, Holly. I believe is your staff report. Is that correct? Is yours the next one? No, this next one is is, uh, is just a property tax write-off from Jennifer. Okay. Yes, this is yes, this is a staff report from the deputy treasurer, as you say, in regards to a tax write-off, which will come up in resolutions later. Any questions on that from council? I just have a really quick question. Go ahead, Councillor Bongo. So, so essentially, uh, the the way I understand the report is that uh, there was a or is a piece of land. Um, we were collecting tax from the Ontario government, and now it's it's been confirmed that it is crown land, so it's not taxable. Uh, and that's basically a summary of the situation, correct? Well, it was it was a land use permit, and it, so what we determined in this process is that the ministry gives us no um, understanding of when they stop land use permits with the public. So. They end them and then they tell MPAC and years later we find out. So um, this one specifically was finished in 2014. We just kept taxing them, they kept paying and uh, then eventually they said no more. So um, what we really uncovered was that there's no process for the MNR to start or stop uh, land use permits. They just kind of do them as they, as they wish. Hmm. Okay, great. And, and is it a hunt camp or something like that? I have no idea. It could be a it could be a boat or a a boathouse. It could be. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess this is pretty routine, pretty standard. Um, I wouldn't say standard, but it's out of our control. Like it's just something that LUPs are managed by the Ministry of Natural Resources, and we just uh, do as they tell us they're going to do. Is that the one on Dick on? Uh... Ala Lake, Holly? No, 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 no. That one, that one, no. 
And basically, Councillor Bongo, the municipality is a collection agency for the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forests on this on this land type. And as Holly indicated, they don't let us know when they're no longer that then it's when it's no longer for us to collect funds on their behalf. So it's, I, it's actually the other way around. We oh. we send all of the MNR taxes to the MNR and then they they collect based on LUP fees to, okay. from the users. So we just send I, like a large number of, of tax bills to the MNR and then they, they pay them, some of them individually, some of them in bulk. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Holly. All and, right. And just last question. So, so that piece of land will, will note like the, it's not being used by anyone at this point, is that right? Yeah, it just goes back to Crown. So similar to the, there's a piece of property between your ha your lodge and the, the park. It was no determined that it was no longer needed by the user. Um, it just goes back to a piece of Crown land. It's, it's no longer a parcel. Great. Any further questions to this report? I just, I know one interesting fact about LUPs that the rest of the council may not be. The land use permit fees are based on the value of the vacant land so it doesn't really mean anything what is on that land it doesn't increase the value of it as far as taxation is concerned that's a good point councillor florent because i as you i'm aware of some lups that are quite elaborately um um housing on their on their lups so it's interesting yeah. comment our archery club is using an LUP. That's why I know the, the facts on it. And the the uh, increase has uh, risen dramatically in the last uh, seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. I agree with so that. I have a. I just have a question about that. Um, so, MPAC values those properties. So, are you sure that um, MNR isn't paying the value, and you're just paying based on MNR's formula? I'll, I'll look into that because I know that MPAC does value them. So I would assume that they're valuing them the same as everyone else, but I can, I can. That's a good point. That clarification would be interesting to, to hear Holly. So thank you. Any other comments on, on this report? Hearing none, then Holly will go ahead to your report. Thank you. My report is just a general report this time. Um, so I did hear back from both uh, Yakabuski's office and the, um, the advisor that I'm working with at Infrastructure Ontario, and they have said that they will uh, carry on with a discussion and let us know uh, where that goes with regard to the Lyle landfill um, transfer. Uh, the, the radio tower, if you recall, a few years ago, we talked about that radio tower quite extensively. Um, it's changed hands again, so um, the fees are not going to change, but the person we're doing business with is. Um, we've included the bylaws and the policies that we've been creating related to COVID, and that'll, that'll be passed later in the, in the meeting or discussed. Um, I just put a little information in there about the community safety well-being plan. So we did very well with our um, our responses to those surveys, and the uh, the consultant is in the process of um, looking at the data. She said just a brief uh, review. She has some some good information for our South Algonquin, so she's we're looking forward to, to getting that back. Um, I did reach out to the Algonquin team, uh, the negotiation team as well as the local area, um, local Whitney and area Algonquins to talk a little bit more about the things that we talked about in that December 12th meeting, um, just regarding specific parcels and um, some of the things that are in our official plan and our, our zoning bylaw that we just wanna make sure that they're aware of. Um, I did, we did as directed by council, we submitted the, uh, the application for the COVID um, relief fund was submitted for the trestle. Um, and you can see I've given you a little bit of information on insurance. I think anybody who's, uh, I'm reading everywhere that insurance across the board, businesses, everyone's going up. So um, 
people see. I think that's kind of, uh, I don't know if anyone recalls that Roma a few years back, the provincial government said some things about insurance. So maybe that's what's coming back around. Um, and we did submit um, a, a South Algonquin specific um, um, set of comments on the supplemental report to the ER. So that was, you know, where we knew there were trails or where we knew there was conflicts with uh, the official plan or the zoning bylaw, we've made them aware of that. And hopefully that'll come back through that, uh, that discussion that we've asked to have. Um, the Brian has submitted our 2020 information to EMO and his local rep has said that it's accepted and he's pushed up the chain for approval. Um, we do have to set a couple meetings. Um, uh, the fire chief has three reports that he would like to present to you guys. Um, two are related to budget, and I can't recall the third right now, but we thought we could just uh, hold a committee meeting to do that. We'll give you that package in advance. And then also we've, <clears throat> excuse me, we've talked a few times this morning about the need for an economic development meeting. So um, I don't know right now, um, we have two weeks left in January. <clears throat> Carla and I usually spend most of our time the Wednesday before a council meeting putting the package together. So um, if you guys are interested in having a committee meeting um, next Wednesday, we can do that. Um, but I will warn you that there probably won't be much effort put into a package in that it's uh, one week away. Uh, but we can we can definitely discuss some of those items that we talked about and put an agenda together. And like I said, we can. We, I thought we could roll it in with an EMS meeting. Um, those those reports that the fire chief is has prepared are ready to go. Um, so, are people available on the twentieth? Um, Holly, could we do the two meetings that day? day then, that's, if if yeah, it, yeah, that's okay. what I was trying to say. I just wasn't saying okay. it very well. Well, no, I think you were, but sometimes that doesn't mesh. So um, just uh, perfectly fine to get, it's important to get the reports back from the chief and deal with those and the economic development. Um, Councillor Bongo is the chair, but I certainly think that um, the presentation from Saba should be discussed further, further by council. So I would add that to the agenda, that agenda. And um, I, I'm fine for January 20th. That works perfectly for me. So other members of council, could you confirm if it works? If uh, Councillor Collins, is that okay for you? I'm so sorry. Uh, absolutely, it's fine, yeah. A nine o'clock, Holly? Yeah. Okay, so it, you're fine with it, Sandra. Councillor Florent? Yes. yes. Uh, Councillor Harper? Dave must be, anyway. Uh, I'm muted, I'm sorry. Yes, no problem. Okay, thank you, Dave. Councillor Bongo? Uh, yes, nine o'clock uh, on Wednesday. Yes, a week from today. Uh, and you're good as chair for the Economic Development Committee meeting that day as well. Good. Yes. Thank you very much. Councillor Shala? Yes. And Councillor Ramir? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. That's excellent. Um, and maybe just before we move away from my, uh, my report, I just wanted to just give a little update. Um, I'm sure everyone heard the uh, information that was provided by Mr. Ford yesterday. Um, we It is kind of trickling down. Usually what happens is he makes an announcement and then they set out kind of a set of guidelines from the ministry and then the local um, clerks are set to meet later this afternoon to talk about what that means for us. Um, there was some misinformation yesterday that was my fault. Um, I had sent a t I, I had to work from home yesterday because my son's at home and I sent a text to Tracy regarding um, the, the rinks being closed and um, she got proactive and put a sign up at the rink that indicated that it would be closing tomorrow. Um, we don't really know that right now. Um, we are definitely uh, getting direction from the fire, sorry, from the health unit that there will be no more hockey um, or no more sports at all. Um, but it looks in the, in the literature that it could potentially be that the rinks can stay open. Um, there might be further restrictions on numbers, but we're going to go through that as staff this afternoon um, and, and figure those things out. In addition to that, um, we don't see much changing. We've already closed the reuse areas at the landfill. Um, we're going to go back. They're suggesting that we're going back to what we were doing last March. So as of tomorrow, we will have one staff in the office 
um, with the exception of when Dave and Carla are here, they'll be here together because obviously they're a bubble. Um, but um, aside from that, we'll just have one of us in at a time. The rest of us will be working from home um, through, through the VPN that we've set up last March. And um, we'll go forward that way for these next 28 days. Um, Dave has already put it, changes to the schedule to, um, to reduce the number of truck drivers per vehicle and to, you know, as you've seen in the, the uh, documentation that we gave you, all of those processes are continuing. Um, so we'll take a good look this afternoon about, uh, at other things that we need to consider. I think the libraries are, um, are maybe considering continuing curbside pickup, but again, we'll go through those details um, this afternoon. So does anybody have any um, specific items related to COVID that you would like us to consider or any questions? I, I have more, more of a statement than a, than a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yes. I, I think if we close the rinks and, um, and, and it would be sad if we have to do that, I think we need to be aware that the staff still need to maintain them because if we come out of these emergency measures 14 days or 28 days from now, we still have some of the winter left where people will want to go and do some exercise. And if we don't have staff maintaining that ice, that won't be possible 28 days from now. So even if we do have to close them, and I hope we don't, I think we should still have the staff there maybe an hour a day or, or for as long as it takes to maintain the ice. Um, because otherwise we, we've thrown away everything. Um, and 28 days from now, when hopefully things are improving and lifting, there won't be any ice there for us to, uh, to, to reopen those rinks. Just something to bear in mind. Thank you. Are there, does anyone else have a comment? I have Holly, one. Oh, go ahead, Richard. I, um, Holly, I've been to the rink a few times and just to see what was going on with COVID and, um, I noticed that they're wearing their masks inside the, the building, but when they're out on the ice, I'm just wondering if there was a, maybe a larger or a reminder sign right at the gate where they go out. Because the last time I was there, I believe there was a group of three together and three or four groups of, a, of two each, but there certainly was no, no six foot distancing. So I'm just wondering if uh, it's likely hard to control. Uh, they certainly weren't wearing masks on the ice and I guess you don't have to. And, uh, but I just think that the, the distancing and, uh, and I've been around rinks for years and I know how we like to mingle and whatever. And I just, uh, I just think it was just a bit too close and uh, I don't wanna create a big fuss over it, but I think it's something that needs attention. And uh, anyway, that's really all I have to say. Uh, thank you, Richard. Holly, I have a thought too. I have, there are individuals in both Whitney and Madawaska that are, are um, I would say, monitoring our snowmobile parking in both area areas. And since the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs have not opened the trails, they're not being groomed. I put it to council, should we be considering closing those in some way? because uh, we do have people from out of the area, at least we did this past weekend, coming in and snowmobiling in South Algonquin. And I don't know how you close down a large parking area like that, but uh, maybe we need to get back to the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs and have them put it out there that, that parking areas for snowmobiling in areas is closed as well. What does count, uh, any thoughts on that? I have some thoughts. I observed uh, the groomer on the trails yesterday in the Wilno area. So I don't know if our trails are being groomed, but some of them certainly are. Uh, so, and uh, I think there's other activities that people could come to our community and use that parking for besides the snowmobile tra uh, trails. I know that's why we created them, but I see them used a lot in the summertime as well. So. That's fair, just a thought because they are coming in from out of town and snowmobiling. So, and, and I, I mean, they're large areas. How do you close them down? They're, you know, they're quite large. And the fact that we don't have much snow, sometimes if you let snow accumulate, it basically closes them down, but certainly 
um, we're not in that situation. So just putting it out there, Holly, if you're looking through things and something pops out, otherwise I, I know that our, our monitors will continue to monitor that situation. Mayor, Thanks. Uh, Richard here. Uh, I believe the, I believe the one, the parking lots in Whitney, um, they certainly took the clutter away from the dam where the fire department has to get in, but also I think they're used and I know there were new restrictions and whatever. Uh, and we want to reduce the number of people traveling from possibly the hotspots in the province, but there, are, I, I believe a lot of, uh, some of the parking in our community is, from residents that have cottages down the river and elsewhere in the township. So I think okay. there, it's important that we have those. Okay, that's fine. Just wanted to put it out there. So that's that's fine by me. Okay. Um, um, Mayor, can I, can yeah. I add to that, please? I, I do believe that the snowmobile clubs are going to continue grooming if we get some snow, the same as um, the rink, because if they don't, when the the state of emergency is lifted they won't be able to use the trails and we're still looking at a month six weeks after the um the emergency has been lifted and hopefully it is um so i do believe that they're going to go ahead and still groom they are grooming um the b trail most definitely mm -hmm. so i think we need to keep those maintained if not brilliantly open so that they can be used at uh, middle to end of February, if indeed things do improve. They're also well, saying the snowmobile clubs stay within your health district, stay within your area. So they're not advocating having people coming from outside. Um, I think we need to be aware of that. Thank you, Councillor Collins. And I really appreciate your optimism in regards to COVID. I certainly don't share it, but I hope you are right and I am wrong. So thank you. Um, Holly, the other, uh, did you want to say anything in regards to the library report? We did receive that and it's good to see that, uh, you know, there is good activity happening in the libraries during this time as well. So anything you wanted to mention there? A lot of a lot of good work getting done there and and looks like memberships are increasing and books going out are, are still going out so that's very very good to hear yeah and i i've been corresponding a little bit with them i just saw some emails come in now so i'll keep doing that and um they were they were re getting ready for a january 5th opening and that's been delayed a little bit but um we'll be ready when we get back to that point again so good thank you anything else holly so Dave, we're going to be on to your report next. Sorry, I have a, I have a couple questions if that's oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Bongo, go ahead. Sure, um, one question with regards to the Lyell uh, landfill site. Um, so, so are we at a situation where uh, the, uh, the terms of the purchase are being renegotiated? Is, is that sort of what's come up at this point? Um, am I muted? Um, I, n no, I mean, so <laughs> the terms of the pur purchase were, as I've told you before, that the, the current valued assessment. Um, so I have given the information that I gave to you to, uh, Yakabuski's office and suggested that at the beginning of this conversation, the, the intention was that it would be transferred to us without, without a fee. So that's what we're asking for. Whether we get that, I'm not sure, but that's what we're asking for at this point. So okay. it's been elevated above staff to the ministry level. Okay, and then when they respond with, yes, you have to pay up, we'll just have that discussion when that time comes, right? Yeah, and we have um, we have money in reserves if, that, if that's where we get to, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and my other question was uh, in the report, uh, it said you were going to present something about the website. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to do that or not. Yes, I'm so sorry. Thank you for that. Um, All right. I was looking I knew, I, you know, when there's something in the back of your head that you know you're forgetting. Um, yes. Actually. Just, uh, um, Okay, so I'm just going to um, 
kind of quickly through this. So I don't know how it looks for you guys. Is it uh, just look like a picture at the top right now? Yes. Um, so, so I'll just give you some of the key changes or the key differences. So the, the platform that our old website was on um, was, was fairly old and fairly difficult to change. So um, what we've gone to with this one is just, this is this will be our homepage. Um, and, and you can see there's some information, um, just some general information here um, about South Algonquin. Oh, sorry. Um, from there, um, From there, we've gone forward um, just into residents and government. So uh, residents, we've tried to break out into uh, these four sections that are specific to, to what residents could be looking for. And then beyond that, um, we will have government. So we have administration, building, council, uh, emergency management, finance, fire, planning, property taxes, transportation, and waste collection. So each of these then have their own sections that specifically describe what South Algonquin does for those, those areas. So for example, um, we've put information on now about um, the integrity commissioner. So who is our integrity commissioner? Why do we have an integrity commissioner? All of that information in plain language. Um, so that I think before kind of the, the uh, website that we had before didn't have any any descriptors, it was a lot of links to documents. So I'll just give you, um, I'll just use the integrity commissioner as an example. Um, sorry, this is difficult because I'm bouncing you guys around. So you can see um, it's kind of gives the, the summary and what, what an integrity commissioner does and who ours is. Uh, so it just gives, um, it gives the public an understanding of, you know, yes, we're following the rules and, and yes, these are your, your, this is your ability to, um, to use that system if you choose. Um, further to that, if I go in here, um, transportation, we've included some sections on, um, you know, the, tra the transportation program that we, we run, construction projects, what an entrance permit is and when you need one. Um, so you can see we've given this little bit of verbiage and then if you need an entrance policy, here's the link to it. Um, so we've done a lot of work to try to take the information that we give to the public every day in usually over the phone or, um, you know, through emails. We've done our best to try to, to make it so that they can find things on their own or that we're describing the things that we're trying to do. <laughs> Um, with, the, with the hope that, that both residents, future residents, and potentially visitors can come here and see all the things that we're doing. Um, so I think we're pretty close to, um, to getting it live. Um, the other thing, that, which is a, a big change, is um, this is all, a, as of 20, um, January 2021, all municipal websites need to be AOD compliant. So um, this this little tab over here shows you the tools. So you can increase the text size, decrease the text size. You can show it in grayscale, high contrast, negative contrast, light background. Um, you can underline the links. And so those are all different things that people can do in order to be able to uh, better see or use our website. So that's that's a nice function. And I'll just, uh, I'll just do... Um, this one, no, sorry, this one. So you can see that drastically changes changes the website. Or um, if you want to take the color out of it, you can do that as well. Holly, can I ask a question? Is there any mention of our health unit um, on there? I couldn't find it and wasn't sure if it was something that ought to be there. But people often look for health within a township. Who yes. is offering? So. Um, um, it's not, it's not on, on here yet. quite yet, but um, I did include a, I, I included a summary that I wrote that explains DSAB and the health unit and where we are as far as being part of Nipissing District and who, there's a little bit about OPP and how we, um, 
the contract our, our services to the OPP. And then there's also reference to things like the MNRF. So if you're having a bear problem or those kind of things. So um, we, we have tried to do that. Um, but like I said, it's not on here quite yet. Um, but yes, we did. So we do explain that we are a part of the Renfrew County and District Health Unit, and that uh, Champlain Lynn is our local is our local um, health provider. Um, so yeah, we put that all in. We've also done this little um, how do I. So you can see here that here's a list of questions that municipal or residents might have, and they can click through that and and find out the information that they need. So most of that is pulled from here. It just gives people a different way to get to it. And access access to the hospital, access to the eMERGE and things like that. People need to know those things. And, and out of hours, they would go to a website rather than pick up a phone. Right, um, yeah. Especially people are very concerned about COVID symptoms, testing. Um, it, it's, it's come to the forefront, obviously, at the moment. I think we would be very remiss to not have something like that on our website. And Holly, right. yeah. So we do we do have that, and we also have a link, um, a, li a page of links. So um, which was on our former website. I just don't know if it was maybe not super accessible or didn't show up as much. But we are moving it over. Um, so that includes things like any um, anyone who has contacted us, who is a business owner, who has a website we put it on that list of links um, so that will be that will be pulled over as well um, so so yeah we're calling that I believe we're calling that around South Algonquin yeah. um, Holly, if I could just build on Sandra's comments I, th I think it's really important that you know this website be as easy for everybody and I think it's important that the Renfrew County and District Health Unit have a you know, a prominent tab or somewhere that it's very evident that you click on that and you'll get into, you know, their website and all the, um, you know, it, like even today, if you went to it, you would get the current information in regards to COVID within Renfrew County, Ontario, et cetera. And um, another thing that's happening out in the community, just so that, and I just have been approached about this actually yesterday, but um, we have a circle of health within our area. And that means all the services within the Madawaska Valley, um, you know, available to members of our community each organization has in the past been putting an article in the local papers once a month describing their services and stuff and they are now asking they will be asking all the um, uh, municipalities within their area if they uh, down the road will be able could have access to put that on our website somewhere so that every month you know anybody that looks at our website can get information on a health service within the Madawaska Valley that you know, provide services to the community of South Algonquin as well. So just so that we have that uh, flexibility, that vibrancy to this web page to accommodate those types of things. Great. Yes. So I think when, when you're saying that, um, you can see here on the side, we have this current fire status. I would suggest that there's probably something similar to that with our DHR <laughs> the health unit, um, as well as what you're suggesting with the circle of health. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or anything else you want to see before we navigate away from this? Uh, I suppose this isn't the last time that we'll be able to view this draft of the website, correct? Um, I think that um, we're going to try to go live with it sooner than later. Um, if you want to, to do a thorough review, um, we're going to continue to do reviews because um, there's, you know, making sure links are, are happening or making sure that everything we intended to go on there is on there. Um, I guess that's a good question. Does council want to do a thorough in-house review prior to letting it go live or are you okay with us letting it go live and, um, continuing to improve it through 2021. I, I, I think Holly, if, if we as council members and users, you know, want to be positive advocates for this, I certainly would appreciate looking at it before it goes live. I don't know, you know, whatever that means, uh, you know, an hour long meeting or something just so that 
even we as users could get the opportunity to play with it and see if we find it. You know, for myself, I'm not a technological person, so um, I certainly would appreciate that. Okay. Other member, member of council, other members of council interested in doing that? I agree. I uh, I would like to look at it from from what what I would possibly want to access from it, but also what I what I think that uh, the people that I represent from outside the township uh, that have a property here, but uh, don't live here and maybe don't have an opportunity to comment. So I would like to look at it from that standpoint also. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you can I, just- I, Sorry, I was gonna say, I, I think it would be great for, yeah, for council to see a draft. And then Holly, like you mentioned, uh, I'm sure throughout 2021, uh, we'll also get various different feedback. And as everybody knows, websites are constantly evolving. So uh, it sounds like we'll get something great as a start and then it'll uh, evolve as it needs to evolve as time goes on. So yeah, that, that looks great. Thanks staff for putting that all together. Okay, all right. Um, so Holly, anything else from you then? Thank you for that. I just muted myself because my phone's ringing in my office. Um, no, I'm fine. Go ahead. Okay, so we'll go to Dave's report, Public Works Department and Operations. Oh, yes, go ahead. Sorry. Thank just you. Can bring it up. Yeah, so just an update. Um, staff was able to complete some mandatory recertification training in December uh, successfully. Uh, we've had an opportunity to uh, utilize the third tandem, uh, tandem and the other full-time person this year to improve service. Uh, we've been able to respond quicker. Uh, you know, it's, it's also separated guys in trucks, which has, has helped with our COVID um, strategy. And uh, with a little bit of a break in the weather, we got into recalibrating the newer trucks, the, the electronics on the, uh, the sand spreaders. Um, there was uh, some setting issues with the uh, the frequency on the valves, which we uh, we dug into and, and fixed, and uh, they're they're spreading very very consistently now. I don't know if, if anyone pays much attention to that, but uh, it's been a big improvement for us, and, and it's going to help with sand usage. The uh, excavator was able to do a small brushing project in December. The weather was agreeable. So we, we brushed a couple of lane kilometers of uh, Macaulay Lake Road that really needed it before the weather set in. Uh, I think we've spoke enough about rink, so I'll skip over that one. Uh, some of the uh, agreements for our boat launches uh, became due uh, December 31st. So we've been communicating with uh, m &R staff in Bancroft to get new agreements. Uh, there's not a concern, but I don't think um, getting them to us is a huge priority under the current conditions, but we do anticipate seeing some agreements uh, you know, later this winter. That would be the Bark Lake boat launch, uh, Hay Lake boat launch, Cross Lake boat launch, um, Macaulay Lake boat launch and Mackenzie Lake boat launch are affected by those. And I did uh, send them a rhyme reminder at the same time that we're still looking for an answer uh, about using the uh, former Allen Lake landfill site as a boat storage for uh, the residents there. Nothing back from them yet though. Uh, Dave, and it's Jane. In regard to the boat launches, um, you know, we've heard from Councillor Harper, et cetera, about the fact that we do all the maintenance and don't get any fees from, from MNRF in regards to that. Will that be part of the conversation? It could be. Uh, at this point, I'm dealing with the, uh, the planner and trying to get the, uh, the paperwork back in our hands. Um, okay. The agreements are not LUPs and they're not MOUs. They're, they're kind of unique agreements that I guess the township perceived. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how they're rewritten. Uh, basically gives us uh, permission to do our regular maintenance and uh, you know, monitor and control those boat launches. So uh, 
I think I can just add to that a little bit um, so that the ministry that we're trying to um, renew the agreements with is MNRF. And I think the ministry that we're concerned about the usage is MECP for, um, for the places where there are access points. Um, MNRF, I think we do need to probably talk in the near future about um, a, some kind of delegation or conversation with the Ministry of Natural Resources about um, Crown Land Camping, uh, because I think that's, that's who is using, when we talk about Bark Lake specifically, that's who's using that boat launch is the Crown Land Campers. Um, so I think right now those agreements say that we won't allow the public or we won't restrict public access. So I guess the question to the MNR is if they're not going to manage Crown Land Camping, um, are we going to be obligated to provide parking? And uh, how do we give parking to our residents over Crown Land Campers? Um, so it, it is definitely, we know it's an issue, but I think it's two different ministries and I'm not sure that the Ministry of Natural Resources is in the business right now of doing anything with Crown Land Camping, it seems. And just how long are those land, like what is the duration of the of the um, the approval when we get it, Dave? Like, is it for five years or is it a very long term? Yeah, I think the last one was 10 years. Um, yeah. I think a long term agreement would be in our best interest. You're right, as long as it met the criteria that we want, that's for sure. So just you know, things can... to keep in mind and any time that it needs to come back to council, it would be we'd be more than happy to give feedback for sure. Yeah. You know, just to, to let you know a little bit about the discussion, they actually had asked if, if, we, uh, if we needed the agreements or we were just satisfied with our shoreline road allowance, our 66 feet. So I, I reviewed them and, and let them know clearly that uh, the facilities go well beyond that. And Crown Land Camping is an issue, not just at uh, Bark Lake, but it's an issue at uh, Hay Lake as well. There's, there's quite a bit happening in there. So, um, being able Good. to enforce our bylaws is, is important part of this agreement. Absolutely. And the environment from 10 years ago is very different for the usage of those areas today, 10 years later. So I think it has to be vibrant to what the situation is currently for sure. I, I think that the, uh, the crown land camping is going to do nothing but increase actually. So yeah. particularly yeah. where people are looking to get away from cities. Good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just moving on to uh, capital projects, if that's okay. Uh, Hay Creek Road, we've received two engineering uh, proposals and uh, we're waiting for a third. And they are uh, good numbers within the budget that we had included for in 2020. So they'll be carrying into 2021 or we'll be proposing to carry them into 2021. Um, the road needs study, um, I have, again, the same three firms are interested in quoting uh, or coming up with a proposal. We were just working on scope. So uh, in order to narrow it down, basically they all would include an inventory manual. I don't know if everyone is familiar. I'm actually, everyone was probably not familiar with the last one that was done in 2005, but it's basically an inventory of our roads and their conditions and uh, it would create priority based on, um, uh, sorry, for capital replacement based on uh, the level of service it provides in its existing condition. And then also give us uh, budgets for those repairs. Uh, we did get into discussions about the sign survey and they all are in agreement that they would like to identify um, the, the areas of most concern rather than doing the entire road system, which I think would work. And, uh, you know, for the straight sections or where we don't have concerns, we would just use the uh, book five and assess our own signs through there because they, they do need to narrow it down a little bit or it becomes a little bit laborsome. And the other thing they have asked me for is to identify roads for traffic counts, um, again, to be a little more efficient with our costs um, and that specific would mean you know say the uh, the Mackenzie Lake system we would look at the main Mackenzie Lake Road and maybe the North Road but not all of the little roads that come off of those because the traffic counts on the main roads would, would give us a good idea of the interior roads. 
Uh, our new single axle truck, there is a resolution to uh, accept it. Um, I've been told there's tremendous delays getting vehicles built right now. Uh, the uh, fire truck that uh, I think the tender closed back in August, I was informed was just picked up to be built by Ford about two weeks ago. Uh, so we're looking at this point in time of not receiving that truck until the fall. And that delays across the board. They're, that's what's happening in the industry at the moment. And then finally, I had a, a, a general quick look at uh, the costs associated with expanding winter service to Shields Road for discussion. And uh, we can bring that to an asset management meeting or, or to a budget meeting and council can decide which way they would like to go with that. That's about all I have. I'd like to ask any questions or talk about anything. Uh, I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Councilor Florent, go ahead. Okay, I have. So I did a little bit of research into the Shields Road situation. I don't know if it's appropriate to include it or add it now. Uh, is certainly, I think we should be having a asset management meeting, waste slash waste meeting sometime uh, February or March, sometime uh, before the budget is passed, because we if we're going to do this work, it has to be included in the 2021 budget. Uh, my research is, is on the number of properties and the size of the assessment in comparison to some other roads in the township. And I just want, just to clarify Shields Road a little bit, uh, it's not that we would be adding that to our road system because it's already in our road system. It was in the road system of the Allen Lake uh, Local Roads Board when we took it over. It was like a work in pro a project in, uh, in process, similar to Pastwa Lake Road where it got some maintenance, but not the same level as, as the other roads. It's not like we're adding a new road. It's a road that's already in the, in the system. Okay. Is that it then, I Joe? Thank give, you. I can give you that information now on uh, the assessment or that, or if we're going to schedule an asset management meeting, I'll just hold off and do it then. I think that would be good, Joe, and we can. I, I think we could go ahead and book a meeting for February or March. Sure. Thank you. And Councillor Shalley, you had a comment? Yes, I slipped up a little bit, I think, when we were talking about um, our previous meetings and the asset management meeting. And, and in regards to Hay Lake Road, uh, we dis when we discussed it at the previous meeting, we, I think it was left in the air a bit as to whether the township was going to do it or was going to be contracted out. And uh, it almost seemed like, and I would, I'm not sure whether we're going to work, hopefully we're going to come back to that, uh, whether there was any uh, business arising from, but anyway, and it's kind of related to this here is the capital projects. And uh, I may be wrong, but I thought we talked about, uh, we talked about two things, whether we were going to do it in-house without engineered drawings or we were going to do it with engineered drawings. And I believe Dave suggested we would do it with it, have engineered drawings and they would be part of our, our budget for this year so that the work could be done possibly the following year. So anyway, I'm just wondering, Dave, uh, can you clarify that? Yeah, my understanding was that we were going to look at it uh, in-house. I think whether we did engineered drawings or not was still up in the air, just doing it as a resurfacing project. Um, I don't really, I mean, the road is not uh, that sophisticated, so it, it could just be simply resurfaced with the culverts replaced. Um, my, I was going to prepare budget numbers to bring to uh, an asset management meeting for a possible capital project. Uh, maybe as early as for the 20, 21 year. Okay, excellent, because I fully agree. I believe there's only two culverts 
and maybe three that at the most, the others have all been replaced uh, just recently within the last uh, 10 years. So um, there may not even be three. So, and I fully agree. And I uh, think I mentioned before, it's almost a shame. It's almost a waste of money if we didn't need an engineered uh, report or drawings when uh, we use your expertise to do it. So anyway, uh, good. As long as it's going to be in there, or we're going to be discussing it or whatever. So that uh, I just wanted to clarify and go from there. And maybe uh, if it isn't too late, it likely is, but uh, to get it in the asset management uh, minutes, which I slipped up. I had a note made here, but I just uh, overlooked it. So anyway, uh, Good. I'm looking forward to the work and uh, anyway, and future discussions. I, I have a question um, for Dave, if, if I may. Go ahead, Councillor Collins. Um, I didn't really want to Shanghai you at this meeting, Dave, because that's not, not my way. But for a couple of years now in the budget, there has been um, an application, and, and I know this is the case because I've seen it, to do something about the underground tank for the fire department and the rink. Um, that underground tank is a health and safety issue with regards to the guys having to lift the concrete lid to actually see how much water is in there. It seems a very stupid way of monitoring water into a tank. We do not have um, a ball valve or a cistern or even a float switch on that. I believe it was fitted with one many, many years ago. And because it failed, it was just taken out of the system. And many years on the budget, it has been put back in, put back in. And I was quite horrified to find that that actually still hasn't been done. And guys are trying to lift that concrete lid um, when it can be icy and dangerous. And I think we need to address that sooner rather than later. I would just like to interject because I have been managing the budget for four years and I've never seen that come across my desk. So I'm not sure what version of the budget that you're seeing it in, but I would like to see that version. Um, I believed it had come through um, Chief Tom. He'd asked for it to have been looked at, be looked at several years running. So I would like to see where that's been asked for, because like I said, if you're bringing up a health and safety concern and I've been here four years and I haven't seen it, I would like to see where that's been requested. Okay, I'll have to get back to him. I think Thank maybe you. Councillor Florent, you know about this too, don't you? Possibly I do. more than me. I do. Uh, I don't think there's a icy situation because it's inside the heated building. So, but it is a, the, the weight of the lid is a hazard and <clears throat> there's no grid across the hole, which there should have been. Uh, so somebody could possibly slip into it. When it was originally built, there was a, a float switch on it and uh, to fill it and, and the float switch failed. So in 2000, so we just didn't use it. We used it from that time on after it failed, we used a visual inspection to determine how much water was in the tank. In 2010, when the new community hall was built, the whole area was replumbed and all that mechanism for the automatic fill up and the gauge disappeared at that time. And when it was reinstalled, replumbed rather, that part, that part was missing. So it was probably way back, Holly, in 2011 or so when it would have been mentioned in a fire report. So I agree with uh, Councillor Collins. It is, a ha uh, it is a hazard. I don't think it's that difficult a hazard to fix. I think, uh, I think a, a simple ball valve uh, mechanism to determine the level of water in the tank should be a very simple installation. It doesn't have to be connected with actually filling the tank, which the original one did. And it was that part of it that failed. There was a 
a control valve that was supposed to shut off the water supply when the tank was full and then the ball valve when it uh, when it was actually floating it would activate the switch uh, there was a lot of concern because it didn't shut off 100%. It shut off about 99.5%. But if somebody wasn't in that building on a fairly regular basis, we were concerned that it would just continuously flow and flood the whole system and flood everything, all the electronics and everything out. So something just visual, a visual sight stick or, or something like that <laughs> would, would be adequate, I'm sure. But they, they shouldn't be lifting that big concrete tank lid up just to see if there's any water in there. It just seems crazy to me. Uh, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, sure. And I, I have the floor at this point, thank you. I, I can understand Holly's dismay that she's not been made aware of this. And every member of council, every staff member in the township of South Algonquin have an obligation to report a health and safety issue as soon as they know about it. And to bring this up at a council meeting for a situation that's been going on and awareness has been there for a long period of time, I have to say I'm very disappointed. And I think it puts all of us under um, not carrying out our due diligence. So I'm going to park that. I would like that to be brought to Holly as soon as possible. I'd like to see the documentation that's been mentioned. And it's in Holly's ballpark now and there will be something done about it. And I propose at this point to carry on in the agenda. I'd just Thank like you. to bring one more thing forward uh, for information of council. That tank is actually a, it was designed for septic. Uh, it's a 3000 gallons. So the lid on it is the same as a lid on a standard septic tank. So they are lifted all the time, especially by the people that uh, pump septic tanks. So I don't think it's uh, a violation or anything. It's just, it's not convenient. Well, to make comments in a public forum about a health and safety issue that's been going on for years or perceived health and safety issue going on for years, I have to say is disappointing. And thank you for the history. It's much appreciated. Um, any other questions to Dave? All right, are there Dave, any- uh, Yes, I, Dave, you mentioned um, calibrating your the sand, but I've noticed that the, uh, the plows this year must have been recalibrated recalib also and maybe a number of times or maybe it's the rubber blade or whatever but they certainly are scraping it down uh, much better than other seasons and uh, whatever's going on there is excellent. We did uh, once the roads froze we switched to the rubber blade which which removes a lot uh, a lot more material and uh you know we've also tipped them up uh with the frozen road conditions so it's, it's working much better anyway i noticed there's a difference well anyway thanks thank you for that feedback are there any counselor reports all right so we're at number eight in the agenda business arising from the minutes Is i have any... one go ahead councillor florence it's the uh, emergency services meeting of November the 25th in the uh, staff report from Chief Kruger. I don't know if Chief Kruger is in attendance today or not, uh, but in his analysis of the proposal for this new bylaw that's on the agenda for today, it includes campfires. Now, just because it says campfires in the analysis doesn't really mean that there, it includes campfires in the bylaw. I'm concerned that if it does, we're creating more of a problem than we're fixing because I, I seen some other mention today of thousands of acres of crown land in our township. I would suggest that we have hundreds of thousands of acres of crown land and it would be too much of a task to ask our fire department to monitor every campfire in 100,000 acres. I would understand if campfires were included in other townships bylaws, townships that would be mostly patented land, but our township has so much crown land and so many lakes. So every, every lake conceivably could have a campfire at the same time in the township. Like, traditionally, campfires have been exempt from burn permits. 
uh, because they're deemed to be for heating or warmth. Uh, I'm just, I'm curious if this bylaw is going to include campfires or just the status quo of what we had before, except a new permit system. Um, Chief Cougar is, is not on the call. Um, I would suggest that if you have the that if you have a question like that, that we just defer that bylaw to the EMS meeting that we're having next week, and then we could put that back on the agenda for the February uh, council meeting if everyone's in agreement with that. Mayor Dumas. Uh, go ahead, Dave, Har Councilor Harper. Um, I have the same concerns as Joel has, Councilor Ford. Um, credibility is one of them within the township. For unknown number of years, we have never required a burning permit to toast a marshmallow or a hot dog. I can't see that happening. Um, I don't think it's required. I don't think there's been that many problems with the system we've got. And we're just creating a lot of hassle for our residents. And it only includes our residents. As Joe points out, there's a lot of Crown land. And also the park is another one. We're going to be the only people in the country that require burning permits for campfires. And all around us, they don't. Or they won't have them anyways. Well, I'd like to talk to it about when we have the next meeting. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Councillor Harper and Councillor Florent and Holly. I think I, I appreciate your suggestion and I think we will table that bylaw and bring it back for further discussion at the EMS meeting. So we'll go forward with that. Thank you for that feedback. Um, any further business arising from the minutes? Uh, we, in, uh, in the waste management meeting, uh, just a second here. Uh, We talked about sending a letter to the business regarding the items that are placed in the garbage bins that should basically be disposed of uh, in the demolition area. Has that letter been sent out or we work, is that something we're going to be working on before spring operation or can you update us, Dave? And no letter has been sent at this point in time. I, uh, <laughs> I was thinking more of a spring thing. I thought we, we sort of needed to uh, maybe to refine that a little bit. That's what I thought also, and I, but I just wanted to clarify and because I was wondering if, if the letter had been sent, uh, our staff monitoring what's going in and out because uh, I think it's a, it was a good idea and, uh, and we just manage our waste much better, that's all. I, uh, I saw it as, as kind of part and parcel with a revision to the bylaw. Okay, okay so that's, a, that's pending. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, business arising from minutes? Hearing none, any unfinished business? Uh, right. Could we set a date for that uh, oh. asset management meeting and or no, I guess the, the fire one will be at the meeting that we've already scheduled, right? Yes. But we can yeah. go ahead and set the February committee meeting. Um, yeah. If you guys are okay with uh, probably February 17th. That, that works for me, that's excellent. So we'll do a waste asset management meeting that day. Sure. Is that agreeable with the chairs? Yes, it is with me. Okay, Richard, you're fine. Uh, February 17th? Yes. Waste, and, uh, waste and asset management? That's correct. Okay, yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay, 9 very good. 9 a.m. Okay, thank you, Holly. Great. All right, uh, so we're at... Um, did I, I did unfinished business, right? Okay, so we're at number 10 in the agenda correspondence, the action item. Uh, the item there was from our member of Parliament, Cheryl Gallant, in regards to our funding for the Summer Canada Jobs, Canada Summer Jobs Program. Uh, any comments on that? And then we had information items. Um, and those are, okay, where are we, Holly?
we're at it. Yes. Information items. Okay. Which one is this? Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. That was a lot of jumping around. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so that uh, comments to, on the first item, that's the extension of the community safety and well-being plan uh, completion in, in regards to COVID. Um, we have to, a notice from Bancroft Minden Forest in regards to the 2021-2031 forest management plan. And um, that is uh, in review currently at that time. So if you want to comment on that, I think the period of consultation ends in... Um, uh, I think it's starting soon and ending in, it's starting soon. So if you want to comment, you can go to the MNFR, MNRF website and see that. Um, the update received on COVID vaccine uh, distribution, the task force, there's information in there as to the rollout of that plan. I don't know if there's any comments on that. Hearing none. And the MNRF is uh, the last one is a short term forest management plan extension for uh, the Bancroft Minden Forest. So, any comments on those? Hearing none. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, any new business? Hearing none. Uh, notice of motions. Are there any notice? Oh, so go ahead, Holly. I'll let you finish and get out of there. Uh, I'll go back here. Okay, go back to your agenda. All right. Uh, are there any notice of motions of council? Uh, yes, Mayor, if I may. Go ahead, Councillor Bongo. Sure thing. Uh, I would like to formally um, propose a notice of motion for for the township to adopt uh, an official social media engagement strategy or policy. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of different people, both on council and staff, have uh, uh, deferring opinions about uh, social media and its usefulness and, it, and the role that it plays. Um, but uh, um, in my motion, I'd like to recommend that we uh, allow comments on our live stream YouTube videos, uh, that we somehow incorporate a step where we can nominate uh, bits of information that come up in meetings that would then be scheduled to be posted on some kind of a routine schedule um, in our social media routine um, that mm -hmm. the um, forthcoming economic development intern that maybe around 25% of that person's time is dedicated to social media engagement um, and that we explore using software such as Hootsuite uh, to help manage our uh, social media communications. And uh, I totally understand that this would probably be discussed at a committee meeting, uh, but nevertheless, I just wanted to throw this out there. Um, thank you, Councillor Bongo. That, I think uh, what you're suggesting is something that would need fulsome conversation and perhaps some um, investigation as well. So I would respectfully suggest to you that we take this back to the Economic Development Committee and have some of this dialogue at that committee level and uh, then decide, decide on a plan as how you would like to go forward with that. Great. Would that, would that be acceptable? I think okay. so. Okay, fair enough. So you, we've gotten your notice of motion and what we will mm -hmm. do at this point is take it back to committee for discussion and, and, and further investigation into that process. All right. Can oh, I go just ahead, ask I'll... one question? Bongo, you've mentioned um, comments on the YouTube video. So i just like to clarify that because I think that right now anyone can comment on the YouTube video. Um, I've seen comments there in the past. Um, so what are you proposing further to that? Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check all the videos. There, there's a, the ones that I've seen, it just says that comments are closed. Um, just it, by default, most YouTube videos that you see, there's there's just a section where you can um, just add comments. Um, similar so, to how, sorry, go ahead. So what would be the benefit of that? Because I think my message to people is if they, they, they have some issue with something that's happening at council, they should be either contacting their local counselor or contacting the office directly. So I, I wonder if, allowing people to make comments on our YouTube video 
um, is going to create another place for staff or council to go to look for input. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I see your um, I see your point there. Um, essentially, I think it'll um, improve our um, our searchability and our uh, engagement overall. I think, you know, I I want our meetings to be as as transparent and as public as possible. And I think that it, it helps our analytics if, if we do have if that engagement appears on the YouTube videos. Yes, I do agree that you know, there is a formal process for us to accept feedback from the public. Um, but ultimately, you know, when I, you know, I think just allowing comments on, on the YouTube video, I, to me, that's, that's an open public forum. Um, and I don't, I, I really don't see how it hurt. <laughs> um, okay. And, so, yeah. Just so you know, I'm not restricting them right now. I've, I I went and put a comment on there today. Um, it says you can chat. So I assume you can chat. I don't think that anybody is going to respond to that chat. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe just take a look and see if it's something just in a setting that I can change. Um, I'll do that. I can do that. I don't have a problem with it. Um, and other than that, we can, yeah, we can talk about those other items at a committee meeting. I think it's very important that this go to the committee to have this type of conversation because I, uh, you know, um, I'm not into people have my telephone number, they can email me, I, I have too much work to, uh, uh, anyway, I would want to know what my responsibility as the mayor and a member of this council would be if we make this commitment. So I think we have to have this discussion at a committee meeting level. So again, thank you, Bongo, for bringing it up. Thank you, Holly, for your input. And um, I think we need to have a, and have this discussion at a at a committee meeting. So perhaps looking at the agenda at the next meeting, we'll have to see how much we can put on that agenda. But thank you very much. Okay. Any other uh, comments, motions of council? Hearing none. So we will go into the resolution portion of the of the um, council meeting. And uh, what's the first one here? Okay, I have this resolution moved by Councillor Shalla, seconded by Councillor Vermeer. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin awards tender SA 2020 10 4x4 cab and chassis truck with dump body and plow to Hunter Ford Sales Limited for $73,349.43, excluding the HST. Uh, calling the vote on that. Uh, is there any discussion? Sorry. I have uh, one question. Every time we buy a new truck, we buy a new plow for the front of it. Uh, why? Uh, I, is there something wrong with the existing plow that we need another one? Yes, the existing plow is completely worn out. We've uh, repaired it numerous times. It's had a new uh, hydraulic pump put in it. The center pin has been replaced several times. The steel is starting to fatigue, um, solenoids, harnesses, it, it's really quite exhausted. So would the plan be to declare it surplus when we get the new one and then get rid of it? I would think so, the entire truck with plow, it's all, yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, any, uh, could I make, any, uh, yes, I'd like to make a comment. It just seems uh, very vague. Uh, truck body is a truck body, but when it comes to plow, there's various uh, models and um, styles. I'm just wondering if it shouldn't be, so when people are bidding, they're bidding on an Arctic, for example, or uh, whatever the various models are, whether it's a, a V plow versus a, an eight foot or 10 foot or whatever they are. I'm just wondering in the future if we shouldn't be clarifying that so that, uh, we're getting what we want and everybody else that's bidding knows exactly what we want. Uh, it was clarified in the tender and we can make, I can make that available if you'd like to look at it. it it's basically the replacement of the same plow we have. It, it's performed very well. It's another uh, V plow, same manufacturer. Uh, they, but it is a foot wider. Uh, they've come up with a new version of the, uh, the same commercial quality plow that we do have. So it's it's a heavier truck and we'll be able to push a, a larger plow. Okay, so the name of the plow would be on your tender and the the, the, the width yes. and the, the model? 
Et cetera? Special okay. Process. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right. Any other further discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, I'd call the vote. Councillor Collins? Oh. Councillor Florent? I'm for. Councillor Bongo? Or. Councillor Shala? Or. Councillor Vermeer? Or. It's carried. Thank you. Councillor Harper? Or. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, Councillor Harper. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thank okay. You. Thank it you. Was All right. No, that's good. Thank you. Uh, the next resolution, Holly. Oh, it's, uh, that's the bottom of the page, right? So I have this resolution moved by Councillor Bongo, uh, seconded by Councillor Harper. Be aware now. Right now. That's the one that we're deferring, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah, we're tabling the fire one. So it's this okay. one that's on the screen now. So we're tabling that and the bylaw when we get to it. Okay, thank you very much. So we are at um, the next resolution. I have it moved by Councillor Shalla, seconded by Councillor Collins. Uh, be it resolved that the Council for the Township of South Algonquin approve the write-off of $411.13 for property tax charge to roll number 4801-020-001-25010-0000. Any discussion? I think we had discussion in, in the report. Uh, calling the vote, Councillor Collins? Four. Oh. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shala? Councillor Shala? Four. Four. Vermeer? Four. Okay, and Councillor Vermeer? Four. And that's carried. Um, the next resolution. Okay, had this resolution moved by Councillor Florence and seconded by Councillor Bongo. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin authorizes staff to apply for two positions for the Canada Summer Jobs Program. Any discussion? Hearing none, calling the vote. Councillor Collins? Four. Uh, Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shala? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. It's carried. Okay, somehow we have notice of motions again. We've already dealt with that. Right? Okay, that's a typo, I believe. And um, no, it's not, it's not no. a typo. This is for some reason we have motions oh, of council. And then oh. the next one is notice of motion. We just misread it before. Okay. It's okay. We've dealt with it though. Okay, and uh, we are tabling this bylaw as well. It's my understanding the pan, oh no, this is the pandemic plan. I apologize. <clears throat> All right, so at 15, item 15 bylaws, the pandemic plan. And um, let me see. Uh, first and second reading, I had counts moved by Councillor Vermeer, seconded by Councillor Harper, being a bylaw to adopt a pandemic plan for the Township of South Algonquin and that it be read a first and second time and be referred to the Committee of, whole, of, the, committee of the Whole Council. Uh, call the vote, Councillor Collins. Four. Councillor Florent. Four. Uh, Councillor Harper. Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shala? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. It's carried. Uh, the third reading, I have that moved by Councillor Collins, seconded by Councillor Shala. Third reading, being a bylaw to adopt a pandemic plan for the Township of South Algonquin as referred by the Committee of the Whole Council and that it be read a third time and passed in number 21-626 and that the said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and the CAO Clerk Treasurer sealed with the seal of the Corporation and be entered into the bylaw book. A discussion? Hearing none, calling the vote. Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent. Four. Councillor Harper. 
Four. Councillor Bongo. Four. Councillor Shala. Four. Councillor Vermeer. Four. It's carried. Um, Agenda item 16, there is no there is no resolution to move into closed section. Sorry, close, closed session. Agenda item 17, payment of accounts. I have this resolution moved by Councillor Bongo, seconded by Councillor Florent. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopt, sorry, uh, South Algonquin authorizes the payment of all bills as recorded for the meeting January 13th, 2021. Batch 20, sorry, 2020-00060 for $21,495.79. Batch 2021-00062 for $130,195.44. Batch 2020-00064 for $9,141.22. Batch 2020-00066 for $10,230.47. Uh, any discussion? I would like to bring up one thing. We used to get a copy of those, uh, like a printout of those individual, not the bills themselves, but the spreadsheet on the payout. We no longer see that. And I, I'm not suggesting that it be included in the package because I don't think it's information that the public needs us access to. But I think councillors should have access to. Um, I would leave that to Holly. I sign off on those and I see the spread, I see the front sheet and I see the detail sheets as well. But I would leave that with Holly and Jen to get back to council uh, in regards to that request, Joe. I can, I can just quickly speak to it. Um, we're going through the modernization process right now. And as you guys know, um, this is something that was called out in the newspaper a while back in one of our neighboring municipalities. Um, the, the auditors and the um, modernization um, consultant is suggesting that we stop doing this batch resolution. Um, the intention is that the budget is passed early in the year. And if we have a procurement bylaw that says that if staff is going outside of that or if there's a certain uh, dollar value required then we'll go for resolution but this resolution specifically is really unnecessary so um, I think through the modernization process we're probably going to do away with this. Okay that's that's good so we'll, it, it'll come back for discussion at, through that modernization process as well. Yeah. So then Rebecca. would would council then be notified if there was any bills paid that weren't covered in the budget? Because that's right, and we do that now. So, okay. so what we are doing right now is we give you a quarterly report on the budget, and if there's anything like, for example, the truck, a large pay, a large purchase like that, we would put that on the table for resolution for the bylaw. But and if we are outside going outside of the the budget, we will bring that to council specifically, which we do now. But this is really just us saying that we're paying bills like hydro and gas and things that are, you know, routine and in the budget. So really, it's a it's not a good use of time um, to create it or pass it. So I think it will probably go away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for that feedback. All right. So uh, then I would call the vote on on this resolution, Councillor Collins. Four. Councillor Florent. Four. Councillor Harper. Four. Councillor Bongo. Four. Councillor Shala. Four. Councillor Vermeer. Four. And it's carried. All right. Uh, the next resolution, 18, adjournment. Okay, I have this resolution moved by Councillor Harper, seconded by Councillor Collins. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adjourns the regular meeting of January 13th, 2021. I have at 1051. Um, calling the vote, Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Har um, sorry, Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Shala? Sorry? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. 
Uh, carried. Uh, thank you. The meeting is adjourned.